Google is taking on the Chinese government. Make no mistake, Google really wants to stay in China. When you hear the word Google, what is the first thing that comes to mind? When I think of Google, I think of a search engine where you can that you can use to find anything at any time. When someone says Google, I think translator. Dad, he always, when someone always asks him a question, he's like, let me Google that. I'd say Google is a tool you can use to find anything on the web. Any pointless information, I just, I type in questions or um, full phrases and anything will pop up. So basically, it is my resource for life. But in China, that's not the case. In China, Google is censored. Um, um, a person named Liu Xiaobo um, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yul Chao Bull, a Chinese political dissident, is currently serving a prison sentence for his participation in the Tiananmen Square protest. The stays here is a huge thing. Like I study here, and like me and my um, like fellow students were talking about it. However, um, when I was skyping with my parents, they completely had no idea about um, this Nobel Peace Prize until I told them. Google's mission statement, as stated by Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the founders of Google, is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. However, the Chinese government has worked to ensure that this does not occur through the strict adherence to its censorship laws. China has a perceived national interest that clashes with Google's values, which makes their relationship questionable. Yet Google entered a deal with China in 2006 where the people of China were given access to Google. However, their searches were censored by the Chinese government. In this deal, Google reserved the right to display on their homepage that the search results were censored. On June 10, 2009, on the 20th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square protests, China censored social networking, as well as information websites such as Twitter, YouTube, and Flickr, as well as Google to prevent the spread of information regarding the events of 1989. When users typed Tiananmen Square into Google search engine, China blocked all results related to the massacre. This decision increased tension between the search giant and China, stopping the free flow of information the centerpiece of Google's mission statement. On January 13, 2010, tensions furthered between Google and China. Google announced that it was considering withdrawing from China following a cyber attack on email accounts of Chinese human rights activists. However, government officials in China denied involvement. China responded, threatening to stop cooperation with Chinese internet censorship and to shut down Google operations in China permanently in response to their attempts to limit free speech. In the following weeks, the United States called upon Beijing to investigate the cyber attacks further. In March, the conflicts between Google and China intensified. China accused the U.S. of using Google as a means of changing Chinese society by imposing American ideals and culture. Soon after, Google announced that it would redirect its mainland China customers to the uncensored Hong Kong-based site in order to curtail the laws outlined by Beijing. They are not exiting the Chinese market, but they are not subject to the Chinese law. That's, I think, one of the best choices they have. In the first week of June, the Chinese government released a document defending the right to censor Chinese internet usage. The document stated that the Chinese government censors information that it believes to subvert state power, undermine national unity, or infringe upon national honor and interests. The government has the means of preventing access to sites which are deemed sensitive by the government, including blogs or websites. This content is blocked by what is referred to as the Great Firewall of China. On July 9th, China renewed its license with Google, allowing it to remain operating its search engine. As a result, visitors to the site are linked to google.cn, the censored Chinese site. Then, they must click on a separate link to access google.hk, 
the Google site, which allows a free flow of information. Google's agreement to China's terms regarding internet usage signifies that while uncomfortable with Chinese law, they are steadfast in their decision to remain in China, a country where the number of internet users exceeds that of the U.S. Economically, strategically, not a good choice to exit the China. Google expanded its offices to China in 2006 in order to take advantage of the vast amounts of internet users in the country. Google recognized an economic opportunity so great that it was willing to compromise some of its fundamental beliefs in free-flowing information. China was an untapped market of opportunity that simply could not be avoided. The relationship between Google and China is a clear representation of the globalization process and how it's changing the structure of the global system with the increased relevance of multinational corporations as actors in shaping global politics. Of course, one of the very important issues is that China is becoming one of the largest markets for the internet use. If you look at the number of the growth of internet users, China, I believe, is surpassing the United States in terms of internet users. And if you look at the past future prospects, China, Chinese market will become even more important. But Google considers the Chinese market as one of growth, growth potential. They think that too, the Chinese market is just too big to ignore. In the end, Google successfully moved its headquarters to Hong Kong, where there weren't concerns about censorship. The Chinese government was displeased, but too many businesses in China are dependent on Google to actively protest the move. This is a clear demonstration of the increased role a multinational corporation has on influencing the decision of state actors. So increasingly what you notice is that uh, many multinational corporations, they are so powerful that actually it take, it's, uh, it's becoming increasingly a conflict between nation state and the Google. Another example is most recently the European Union, they, they issue an antitrust law against Google. They consider Google as a monopoly and they consider it to be bad. So you're right. It's increasingly the multinational corporations they are very powerful, especially when you can control so many information. So many people are depends on you in doing business. It's uh, it's a very the global economy, as an example of a complex adaptive system, has experienced widespread changes and increased interdependence. Currently, the global economy is in transition from a vertical structure to an economy characterized by rules and norms that govern a wide range of actors. Google, like many other multinational corporations, has taken advantage of the changing global structure and benefited from increased interdependence in the global system. As a multinational corporation, Google has demonstrated the expanded influence of non-state actors in the global system and the valuable status they have attained, representing a new category of actors with immense political clout. As a result, competition for political power between multinational corporations and nation states has increased. Google's choice to renew their license with China demonstrates the amount of influence and opportunity the company has within the country. Businesses in China are quite dependent on Google services, but Google is also unwilling to lose a vast amount of internet users within the country. Both Google and China have something to gain from remaining involved with one another, demonstrating the increased interdependence of state actors and multinational corporations. Whether or not the increased role of multinational corporations is beneficial or harmful is still hard to see. Many would argue that the global system is moving from a unipolar world to a nonpolar world, characterized by the increased role of non-state actors in the world economy. The political and economic relationship between Google and China demonstrates the beginning of these changes.